I've been doing some more advanced episodes lately, but I like to mix things up, so this episode will be a little more beginner-focused. By the way, in the source code I post online for these episodes, I'm now placing a before and after version of the project, so if you want to follow along, just check out the before version, and uh, I'll link to that in the show notes. Let's say I have an application here where I can post messages. So I have a list of messages here, and I can create one. So I can say, hello world, post a message, and it just shows up in our list of messages here. Now what I really want though is to be able to make these threaded, so I would like to have a reply link underneath each one where I can reply to a specific message and then have that new message show up underneath that original parent message. So how might we go about doing this? Now back in episode 162, I showed you how to create a tree association using the Access Tree plugin. While this could work in our case here, it wouldn't be the best on performance because it would require a separate SQL query for each message to determine the descendants of that message. So it would be nice if we could fetch all the descendants of a given message in just a single query. Now there are a number of nested set plugins which do this, but the one I've been really impressed with is called Ancestry. One really unique thing about this is that it stores everything in one column in your table called Ancestry and it's a string type column. So it's not just storing a parent ID, it's storing a lot of information in there that it can use to fetch uh, records. So it provides a lot of methods in here called, uh, for example, you can get the parent, you can get children, you can get descendants, you can get a subtree, and so on. A lot of different ways to fetch records uh, through a tree association. So let's try this out. First, just go to the gem file and add the ancestry gem inside of here and then run the bundle command to get it installed. And then we need to make a migration. So we can run Rails generate migration and call it add ancestry to messages because message is the name of my model and it's an ancestry column that's a string type. So we'll generate that migration. And the readme also suggests adding an index here. So let's add it. We'll just say add index on our messages ancestry column and then remove the index like that, and then run the migrations with db migrate. And the final step is to go to your model and call has ancestry inside of here. There we go, now ancestry is all set up. So now we can apply this to our application. Let's make a reply link under each message here that creates a new message. So this is what that index template looks like while we're looping through our messages. And right next to the destroy link here, I'll just add a link to and call it reply. And let's go to the new message path. Now we also need to pass in the current message ID, let's call it a parent ID, so that we have reference to it. And then just like that. And then inside of our messages controller new action here, we want to pass that parent ID parameter through, just like that. And then finally, inside the form, we need to pass in that parent ID as well inside a hidden field. So let's say hidden field, parent ID. So that way it just gets passed all the way through the chain. So now let's try this out. If we reload the page here, we have a reply link and clicking on it, we get a new message form and the parent ID is passed through. Looks like it's working, but it would be nice if we had the original message be displayed up here. I mean, ideally we would have some kind of Ajax action when we're replying to us to make the form inline. But to keep this simple, uh, let's just display the original parent message above here. So this means we have to move our messages in our index action into a partial. And that's easy to do in TextMate with Control Shift H. We'll just call it message. And then we can shorten this to render messages like that. And then inside of the new template, we can render a parent message if we have one. So render you can just call message.parent and that'll give it the parent message association. Uh, let's say if we have um, a parent message. And you know what, while we're at it, let's just change this title to reply. So now we can try this out, going into the index action, hit reply, parent message shows up here and we can try replying to this, post a message. And that works as far as passing in our parent ID, but the way we are rendering these messages here is not threaded. It's just rendering all the messages all at once. Instead, we want the responses to show up directly under 
the original parent message. What's nice is that Ancestry provides this method called a range, which returns the records in a nested uh, set of hashes. So this will work just perfectly for rendering out our messages so that they're nested. Now you can also pass in an order clause into here to specify how you want them sorted. And it does say that this only works in Ruby 1.9. However, I looked into the source code and it looks like it's using active support ordered hash now. So I believe this will work in Ruby 1.8 as well. But um, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. So we can just call a range on our messages here, assuming it's a scope. So we can say arrange, and then we can even order them by, how about the created at um, timestamp. However, this is a hash, so we can't just pass it directly to order, we'll need to loop through it separately. And I like to do this inside a helper method, so let's call this uh, nested messages. And let's make a helper method to handle this. So inside of our messages helper, let's make a new method here called nested messages that takes some messages. And then for each of these, we'll want to loop through that hash. And I'm actually going to use map here because we have, we want to join these all together at the end. So we have our messages message as the key and then our sub messages as the value. And at the end, we just want to join these together and I'll call HTML safe on them so that uh, that handles the HTML correctly. So inside of here, we want to render our message. And we also want to uh, display our sub messages uh, in here as well. So we can call nested messages in our sub messages. And finally, I want to wrap this all in a tag. So I'll say content tag. Let's make a div tag. And let's give it a class of nested messages. So basically, this will happen recursively because it calls nested messages on each of these sub messages here so that it loops through and renders out all of the messages in total. So watch the order of these messages as I reload this page here. And now can't wait shows up under the original message that it's his parent. So I can do indenting with some simple style sheets. So inside my CSS file, I can reference that div I made called uh, nested messages and just add a margin left on here. Let's call it 30 pixels. And here's a little tip. If you don't want them nested too deeply because it can get pretty wide for long conversations, what you might want to do is um, stop the left margin if it gets very deep. So you can just add as many of these as you want. And then after, let's say, four nested messages, it won't uh, no longer add a left margin. So now when we reload the page here, well, look at that. It's now properly indenting nested messages. We can even respond to more. And even deep nesting works as well. Looks great. To finish this up, let's add one more feature. And that is, if you click on a message, it should focus on that message specifically and show the thread there as well. So what we could do is where we're displaying our message content here, we could just make this a link and just have it go directly to our message show action. And then we can go inside the show action template. And currently it's just a basic scaffolding template. And uh, so what we wanna do inside of here is actually render our nested messages because we wanna show um, you know, the threaded messages. So we have our message object. And what we wanna do is call subtree on this because that'll fetch the message, including all the child messages all in one big array. And we can call a range on this to arrange it all in any order we want. We'll again order by created at. So that way um, it, ba it does basically the same as our index action, but focusing on that message exclusively. So now when we go to our application and click on the content of the message, and now it just focuses directly on that message. So no matter how many children and descendants deep nesting we have on the page, it's all going to fetch all those in just one query. So you don't have to worry about um, performance issues and multiple queries. So that wraps up this episode on threaded messages using the Ancestry gem. I think it's a pretty nice solution and I encourage you to try it out.